Welcome to Rock Vegas, everybody. It's Glenn Rockney, and uh, just getting ready to do a deep dive on the on the D line, um, who I think needs to play better, who I expect to break out this year off the D line. Um, I really want to go uh, position group by position group, especially because you know this off season is gonna you know. I think it's, there's not going to be as much news uh, right away, just given given the current current climate in the NFL, uh, kind of the uncertainty around training camp and stuff like that. I think we're going to be hurting for uh, for content in a little bit, and uh, as expected. So, I kind of want to these next few episodes. I kind of want to just go through each position group and and do a deep dive. Look, I'm not a huge you know I'm not a crazy football expert X's and O's type of guy, but I I do you know watch this team religiously, so. I do, I do have an opinion, and uh, I just wanted to give it a kind of an opinion on on what the D line is like today, just the D line. Um, but in unrelated news, uh, Prince of Mukamara signed with the Raiders. I really like this. Um, you know, maybe maybe he doesn't start for the team. And in, in theory, you want your first round pick to start that everybody thinks you reached for, and it's not going to look good if he's not starting right away. Um, and, and he, and he should, he should have to start right away. That's, uh, it would be, it's insane nowadays to have first round picks, even that quarterback quarterback. They hardly ever sit anymore. Mahomes being a, you know, Mahomes being kind of an outlier in that scenario. But I, most of the time your your first round picks going to play and, and play considerable amount of snaps, important snaps. And, uh, we expect our net to play early. And, and if he doesn't, it, you know, maybe maybe the pandemic has something to do with it. Maybe not having enough time to grasp the offense, or I'm sorry, the defense. And maybe rookies aren't uh, maybe rookies aren't getting it as fast, just simply because they don't have access to the coaches in person for a long time. So maybe that happens. But I do really like kind of the insurance plan of having a veteran like Amu Kamara to where, if that is the case, you have Mullen and Amu Kamara. Right. Um, Amu Kamara is coming off a pretty rough year. Um, we won't uh, sugarcoat it or anything, but he he didn't play great last year. But the year before that, he was really good for the Bears. Um, I believe he was like kind of I think it was like seventh. I, I don't have the stat in front of me, but he was like like seventh overall coverage grade on PFF. And like I said, take what you take, you know, take say what you will about PFF. I, I do like that stat. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think their coverage grades are pretty good. Uh, they kind of line up with a lot of what we think, given the eye test, people like us who give the eye test, and they kind of try to quantify it. I, I do think where their coverage grades translate. But I think Prince of Mucamara is, is, at worst, just veteran depth, which I think if there were two position groups that really needed some veteran depth, it would have been D-line and the secondary. Uh, I think the secondary is young. I think the secondary is talented. It's athletic. But there's definitely some unknowns, some upside that we're betting on out of young guys. We don't know what we have in Isaiah Johnson yet. We really don't know what we have in Keyshawn Nixon yet, Amik Robertson yet, even though I love him. <laughs> I love him. You know, it was one of my guys. I, I really wanted Amik Robertson, but you, you don't know. You don't know yet. Nothing's a sure thing. Um, I just got rid of Nick Nelson. Uh, that was a controversial take I guess I had on Twitter. I was was excited uh, when the Raiders drafted Nick Nelson. I thought he was a good player. But everyone's like, nah, knew he was horrible the whole time. Sucks. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, now that he's off the team. Got it. You just knew it. You knew it after the fact that he sucked. <laughs> so I was just saying the day that we drafted him in a draft that was not looking good at all and is not good as of now, uh, 2018, I was like, oh, wow, that might be a good one, right? So, uh, yeah, he, he's gone. Nick Nelson's gone for the second time. Um, Nev Nevin Lawson, I know people were saying he played a little bit better down the stretch. I, I don't know. I didn't think he was all that great. So, uh, Prince of Mukamara, I, I definitely think he has a role on this team. I think he sees considerable snaps. And if we have injuries, man, like Trayvon Mullen, even Trayvon Mullen's a second-year player, and I, and I love Trayvon Mullen. I, I loved everything I saw out of him last year. I fully expect him to be a good corner. But the sophomore slump is a thing sometimes. So I mean we're we're still that's the thing with the Raiders is the guys we loved last year, even though I'm pretty sure a lot of them are going to be great players the Foster Moreaus the you know Max Crosby guys like that we they're going to be great in my opinion but not necessarily their second year right I mean there's guys that the league kind of starts paying more attention to starts watching a little more film on starts game planning for Max Crosby is going to be one of those guys next year. 
and maybe Trayvon Mullen is too. And maybe Trayvon Mullen, you know, God forbid guys get hurt, right? We're not just signing guys off the street. So I do like adding a little bit of veteran leadership to the secondary. Um, Amu Kamara was still there and still cheap. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming. I actually haven't seen the figure on the contract, but I'm assuming it's a one-year deal. I, I That's usually where we are at this point in free agency. Um, I think he fits in really well with the with the with the young secondary, and uh, like I said, if if the climate uh, the the pandemic starts really kind of eating into some practice time, valuable practice time, I do expect these veterans to have a leg up on the rookies at least for the first three four weeks of the season. Uh, so you might see Prince Amukamara starting, but again, we want Arnett to be starting. That's <laughs> we we don't want to have to be uh, you know trying to hide him on defense and stuff like that. We we want to be able to put him out there. And uh, and I, I don't see any reason why he shouldn't. He's one of the older draft uh, guys that got drafted this year. I think he was already 24, which is like, oof, man, get the walker out. So, <laughs> you know, uh, Amu Kamara is 31. And uh, like I said, I think he played pretty well for the Bears. Last year was a drop off. So, again, maybe maybe this is just a – maybe he's not good anymore and we're betting. But I like getting him for cheap and betting on the upside. So um, I don't see a lot of – I don't really see a lot of uh, – controversy amongst Raider Nation on that pick on that pickup either it seemed like a really good one uh and yeah I'll, I'll get into the secondary on another episode I think we'll do a deep dive on the secondary there and and uh really go you know player by player uh we'll do that but today's today's about the D-line and uh I will get into that in a little bit but man I just miss football I just miss it like any I know right now that it wouldn't be training camp or anything but I you know even like the the mini I took for granted having like mini camp news to overreact to just that like, oh, man, this guy with no, you know, nobody covering him one handed catch. Oh, man. Awesome. Oh, man. No one can block Jihad Ward. I remember Jack Del Rio saying that. Oh, we were having trouble blocking Jihad Ward out there. And I'm like, oh, man, Jihad Ward, man, guys gonna be awesome. I didn't think that. But damn, at the one one uh, one moment that I heard that I was like, oh, maybe he is good. Maybe we maybe Reggie was right. <laughs> You know, like I miss having that to overreact to. Now all we have is like college film, the same college plays that we go, oh, man, I love that play from, uh, you know, Henry Ruggs. I love that play from Damon Arnett. Oh, I love that. Or, you know, the same eight Derek Carr throws from last year that everyone's like, see, he is good. It's like, yeah, OK, we have that's all we have right now. We don't have any of this uh, mini camp stuff to overreact to. So really starting to hit me that we that we don't have football, you know. Or even like another sport. I'm a huge baseball fan, so at least you know, can't watch, can't watch my A's uh, have a brilliant regular season, uh, and then fold in the playoffs like usual, game 163. So I can't, uh, I don't have that right now, and it's like, man, I just miss football. <laughs> I miss it. So uh, as far as the as far as the defense goes, uh, my whole kind of thing, and I, I kind of took t- took this from Steve Palazzolo at PFF. When you're when you have a position group, and for the Raiders it was the entire defense. When it's bad, when it's really bad, when you're talking, you know, twenty five or le- you know, twenty five or worse, top twenty fifth ranked or worse, like defense. That's what's like really bad to me. I I don't know where the Raiders ranked last year. I know it wasn't good, and none of us think it was good. I don't I don't think anyone thinks that the defense played well last year. So when you have a bad position group or just side of the ball like defense. It's not like you don't have to be great the, the next year when you bounce back. You just got to get back to average. So their whole thing at PFF is like if your offensive line's bad, creep back to average, right? Creep back to average and you will see like huge dividends paid off. Like it'll just be night and day different, right? And that's the way I feel about the Raiders defense. And the personnel's definitely there to be an average defense. Um, could even be really good if it all works out. But if it's bad, it's like, man, there's we got to get rid of a lot of – a lot of coaches, honestly. I mean, at that point, this defense has enough talent to be good. The depth still, you know, it's not great, but it's better than it has been. But we just got to get back to average. So along the defense, when I do these deep dives into the positions, I just I just want to be back to average. I'm not saying when I say I expect huge improvement, I don't mean top five. I don't mean top ten. I don't know. I don't know if that's even possible. It's possible, but I don't think it's likely that that happens. But I could just think of a couple games off the top of off the top of my head last year that the Raiders win if they can just get back to average, right? If they play average defense. So it's it's uh 
or even games that they that they just blow out the other team, right? Like that Lions game doesn't go down to the last possession if if the Raiders play good defense. Um, you know, really at all. Like we haven't I can't remember the last time the Raiders like blew out a team. Was it the Jets game week 2? Yeah, it should have been the Jets game uh 2017 where Lynch was dancing. I was there. It was a wonderful, wonderful game. And then the season just took a shit after that. <laughs> After after that Sunday night game, uh, following at at Washington, ugh. But I think that was like the last time the Raiders just like beat the shit out of a team. Like you know, sometimes like especially against the Broncos, they'll be up by like two scores. Then the Broncos will get it to like within a field goal, and you're like, damn man, I just wanted to chill during the fourth quarter. I wanted to black out. I wanted to I wanted to get smashed. I wanted to I wanted to hit my vape pen and and take another three or four shots and just be like, yeah, we won. It's time to black out and celebrate. Like, you can't even do that with Raider games. It's crazy. So, this defense getting back to average, I think, gets us, like, two more wins. Nets us at least two more wins, right? That would have been a 9-7 and seven team last year. And we, I've, it's well documented how I feel about Carr and the offense. But isolating that, I think you can get at least two wins if the defense plays average out of that. Maybe three. I mean, who knows? So... Uh, without further ado, I just want to take a look at the at the D line. Um, I went over the depth chart as a whole recently, so this might seem a little redundant, but kind of want to go in on uh, the new as of May eighteenth, twenty twenty, the depth chart uh, on D line and uh, who I think is going to break out. So let's let's start with that. Who I who I think is going to be the breakout player of the defensive line. And I, and I honestly will go on and say, I think this guy will be the breakout player of the whole defense. And when I say breakout, look, there's a lot of new blood in here. So I want to talk about a guy who's been here. It's not that many of them, honestly, but a guy who's been there these last, at least, at least since last year. But on the D line, there's a guy that gets forgotten about. And I remember him kind of being the jewel of the 2018 draft. Came with a few question marks. Uh, none of them were his fault. But um, I think the guy everybody forgets about is uh Maurice Hurst Mo Hurst he's good he's a good player I we he, look he he flashes sometimes he disappears there's there's no doubt about it but I looked at his snap count and his snap count is worse than PJ Hall and I mean I, I don't remember Mo Hurst missing games I don't let me see I don't think he missed that many games if at all uh no yeah it's he P.J. Hall was 52% of the snaps, Raiders snap count on defense, and uh, Hurst was 50%. So, look, I mean, they weren't that far off, but P.J. Hall is not nearly as good as as Maurice Hurst. I mean, I feel like this team puts way too much, uh, really wants to stop the run. Like, you know, and and it's like, okay, stopping the run's great, but I look at this division. You're telling me stopping the run is, is our biggest, you know, objective on defense? I don't think so. We got to get past the Chiefs. We got to win at Arrowhead. Um, I again, I actually think the Raiders' defense hasn't been a complete shit show against Mahomes, as a lot of people say it does. Um, I think our defense has actually played, honestly, like better. I, I think it's our, our offense can't score against Kansas City, which is just nuts. But so, Maurice Hurst. There's a stat. Uh, there's a stat that blew my mind, and and I don't know. I I see him make plays, man. Like you, you see him get really good reps at like pass rush reps against decent players. Like I think it was against Kyle Long. He was over. Uh, 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 he was rushing against Kyle Long again in the Bears game. He was a nightmare against the, in the Bears game last year. I think he got a uh, late hit wiped out. I think he got called for a late hit. Was it? Was it? A, I don't I can't remember if it was him or not. But you got he went low on on Chase Daniel or something. Or, or no, it was the body weight one. It was bullshit call. The full body weight on Chase Daniel and it negated a. His pressure and hit caused an interception uh, on, for Worley. I remember being pissed during that because that was like a huge turning point in the game that we did, we did not get. But that game, he was a nightmare. Ended the game, sealed the deal with a sack. Um, I think it was the second one uh, of the game. He was he was really good, and and you see it. Um, honestly, like you know, he his he his stats and analytics are really good. The advanced stats really like him. Uh, here is one that I saw via uh, Mark John on on Twitter. Shout out Mark John, but here is a stat, and let me let me pull it up real fast. Uh, yeah, here we go. 
So this is Mark John retweeted it. It was Ben Lindsay, PFF at PFF Lindsay. Um, and it's the highest pass, ru- pass rushing grades among defensive linemen from week nine to week 17. So pass rushing grades, second half of the season, essentially. Uh, one is Aaron Donald, shock. Two, Kenny Clark, also a beast. Three, Chris Jones. We've all heard of him. Nightmare. Four, Maurice Hurst. Right behind Chris Jones. Fourth, he's ahead of Grady Jarrett. Grady, Grady Jarrett's a beast. And uh, Ben Lindsay then says he thinks that we're going to see a big a big leap out of Mo Hurst this year. And I, I think so, too. Um, now, one thing I do have to say is people forget that Mo, Mo Hurst has a heart condition. And that was a big reason. That's the only reason we got him in the fifth round. He was a first-round talent. First, maybe second round. But, yeah, first, second-round talent. Everybody loved him. But he had the heart problem. I remember Matt Miller, uh, Bleacher Report. I, I like Matt Miller, but he, God, he was so dramatic about that pick. He was like, he really was like, the Raiders should be held in like legal trouble if, if something happens to Mo Hurst. I, the guys I talked to said he'll never play a down of football, and the Raiders are irresponsible. It was like, oh, God, shut up. I mean, I don't know. Are, are they monitoring his step, snap count maybe? Like he doesn't play as much snaps. Is it because of that? I don't know. But it kind of just seems like we we prioritize stopping the run a bit too much on on defense, rather than rushing the passer. I want to be able to rush the passer at any moment. This defense is starting to take shape to where you can do that. Mo Hurst is losing a lot of time. It looks like to Jonathan Hankins. Um, I, I could be wrong there, but Jonathan Hankins played sixty four percent, almost sixty five percent of the snaps, highest on the uh, look like highest on the D line. Yeah, but. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, he, I don't know. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that he's not getting more time. We, again, we're playing Patrick Mahomes. They're going <laughs> to, they're going to let it rip on first down. They're not going to just wait till third down to throw the ball. They're going to let it rip on first down. You bring in, uh, Malik Collins. I, it should be Collins and Hurst. I, I don't know. I think Han- Hankins should just be in, in spots, like kind of, you kind of telegraph your defense when Hankins is on the field, right? I think he's got a decent, you know, he, he he's a good player. I I like Jonathan Hankins. I just think he's not playing in the right era, personally. But man, I, I need to have that pass rush threat all three downs. And I and I hope that Marinelli is able to get great things out of out of Maurice Hurst, because I definitely see him being one of the guys. And and it hasn't happened a lot lately. We a lot, a lot of Raiders that have left have been better on their next team. Look, Cooper and Mac is different, but guys that the Raiders have cut, right, and stuff like that, they haven't been great. Autry was good, but I think he just left in free agency. Um, other guys, we kind of think like, oh, no, ah, why'd we let him get away? And then they kind of fade out, you know. So, Mo Hurst, I could see him really being good for someone else, like really good. And that's not, that's not okay with me. I, I think... He was he, in my opinion, him and Nick Nelson were my favorite picks in that uh, in that 2018 draft. Um, I liked Arden Key too, but I kind of knew there were a lot of questions about him. But man, Mo Hurst, if it's something with the heart that they're monitoring, I understand. You got to look out for the player's health. But we got to get him on the field, rushing the passer, pinning his ears back. I think this team can stop the run just fine. Last year, the run game didn't kill us at all. It was fine. It was actually pretty good, I think, with the run defense. So, I I just want to see Mo, Mo Hurst break out. I think he's, I think he's really good, and I think this could be a Pro Bowl season for him. And uh, the analytics love him. I mean, they go off win rate a lot. So when you're just beating the guy in front of you, right? You're beating that guy, getting into the backfield. Mo Hurst does it a lot. I mean, we can all remember some of his big plays, like when he did the strip sack on Baker Mayfield. Uh, that for Gruden's first win back with the Raiders overtime, crazy game. Uh, yeah, against against Chicago, he that that Chicago game was when I saw it. I said, "Is this is this the coming out party?" It, it didn't end up being, and uh, you know, there's definitely questions about it. Maybe it's a motor thing. I don't know. Maybe they mean him to be meaner or something like that. I have no idea. He seems like such a nice guy. <laughs> if you like hear him talk and stuff, but man, we need to <laughs> we need to get Mo Hurst. We got to give him this last. This is year three. We got to give him that one year of just like, hey, you're the guy at defensive tackle. That's my guy at defensive tackle and say, 
pin your ears back, rush the passer. Um, I don't remember him being a liability in the run game at all. Uh, so it doesn't even seem like you're losing much, really, between him and Hankins. But um, Mo Hurst, my breakout player on the D-line for 2020. Okay, who needs to step it up? A lot of people are not going to like this. Some people will. Uh, got in heated, heated Twitter debates about it. But Cleveland Farrell's got to step his shit up. Happy birthday to the man. I think it was yesterday. Happy birthday to the man. Uh, I maybe I waited a day, right, to to say this. But he's going to have to step it up. Fourth overall pick. I, I know it wasn't his choice to go fourth overall, and even he was surprised. But you're the fourth overall pick. The guy the Raiders traded away, Khalil Mack. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. He was a fifth overall pick. To say you can't expect the same out of those two guys, I understand they're different, right? They're different. They play different. But, man, he's going to have to step it up. You can't tell me Mayock didn't seize him as being like an average player. Like, oh, man, yeah, he's doing just fine. You know why? Because he brought in Carl Nassib, right? Carl Nassib is making $8 million a year for three years. I, I don't think you do that when your fourth overall pick just comes out of the blocks banging and you're just like, yeah, no, this is my guy. We got our bookends. Look, hey, I got this guy in the fourth round, Crosby. Man, we got our bookends here. I don't know. I don't think they think that. I think they're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, right? I, I think they're going to let him – they're going to let him use his work ethic and that great character that is, let's be real, that's one of the biggest reasons he was drafted so high is they were trying to change the character of the team and improve the character. But what, what I don't know. I don't, I don't see it in pass rush. I just don't see it. And if you're welcome to send me like all 22 film clips and say, look, I like this rush right here. I, I don't know. I, I can count on like one hand the times where I'm like, whoa, look at that play by Farrell. I'm sorry, it's Furl. It's Furl. I think I'm saying it wrong. It's Cleveland Furl. Yeah, I got to remember that. I don't remember that many plays where I'm just going, man, look at him. There's a couple. There's definitely a couple. That that fourth down play in the red zone against Stafford, that was a great rush. Uh, absolutely destroyed. Uh, was it Trey Pipkins, I think, for, for L.A.? I mean, everyone destroyed him. So I, I'm not saying he had to come out and, and crush it his rookie year. I just got to see flashes, man. The flashes I saw were sacking Joe Flacco on a coverage sack, basically. Great coverage by the defense, and Flacco's the statue in the pocket. Going to get Rivers, the statue. You know, he he definitely teed off on Rivers. The best one was that Thursday night game where he just had a nice, just under, you know, kind of dipped underneath that tackle, left tackle, dipped underneath, and, cr- and, and, and got to Rivers. That was a good one. Did a little fishing celebration. That was awesome. There's, there were a couple, but man, a lot of rushes. You just see him running super high and just, just running into a wall. Not, not influencing the play at all. Not, not really even a threat. And really, you had the emergence of Crosby. He wasn't even getting the number one. Like the, the just circle him on the game plan. Here you go. This is the guy we got to stop. I mean, uh, I was watching that bussing with the boys, that Taylor, Taylor Lewan and Will Compton. And they had Max Crosby. I had him on, but I think they were talking about another episode where Max Crosby was the guy they got, they were scared of. They were watching that Bengals film. Hey, we're watching this guy. Hey, this is our guy. That's awesome. I love that Max Crosby's panning out. It's awesome. But, man, this fourth overall pick's killing us. This is rookie year. I don't hate the guy. That's the thing. The, the, the debate I got in was, you cannot tell me that his rookie year was good. And there's people that say, oh, yeah, but he's going to be this, he's going to be that. Okay, neither you or I know that. You're speculating because he's on the team, and you feel like you have no choice but to just talk yourself into it. That's fine. But you can't tell me that the season was good. His rookie year was good. It wasn't good. There's no grading. There's no grade from any site (laughs) that says... Cleveland Farrell had a good rookie season. There's nothing. The PFF grades suck. Whew. The eye test sucks. It's not good. 
And and that, like I said, I didn't really see enough glimpses. There's always guys where you're like, okay, that's that it didn't it didn't work out well the first year, but man, a couple of these plays, man, you saw it. And I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see it. And a lot of people, man, one of their go-tos is, hey, Cleo Max rookie year, four sacks. Cleo and Farrell, rookie year, four and a half sacks. What does that say? I'll tell you what that says. Khalil Mack was a monster his rookie year. He was sixth in pressures from his position, and he stood up at outside linebacker a little bit as a rookie. I don't know why, but that was Dennis Allen era. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, he stood up a little bit as as a rookie, and he was sixth in pressures and was, I think, only behind J.J. Watt in tackles at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. He was either tied or one behind J.J. Watt, his rookie year. It's not the same thing. He doesn't have to be as good as Mac. I'm not that. I'm not that guy. He does not have to be as good as Mac. No, Mac is not a typical fifth overall pick. He should have gone number one in that draft. That's that's okay. I'm not saying, hey, this this is what you have to be. No, that's not what you have to be. But you got to be good. You got to be Pro Bowler. Uh, look, the Pro Bowl has been watered down a little bit. You have to be a Pro Bowl caliber player. Is more the right term. And I got to see it rookie year, especially Nick Bosa's two slots ahead of you in the draft and just goes off. Right? He's cr- just just can't be blocked. I understand Crosby had more sacks, but it, they're not. Bosa is a beast. I don't, it, how could the drop off be that much between those two guys where you're like, damn, man? I don't know. It's. I, now let's get to the positive, though. It's not all bad. I see a scenario in which he's a very productive player. In fact, I don't ever I don't even see a scenario where he's a bust, right? Like a, just a complete out of the league, Quinton Copels, uh, you know, guys like that out of the league. I don't see that. I've never seen a second contract. No, he'll get a second contract. Maybe not a huge one, but I see him being a solid player and a solid contributor. I'm just tired of settling for solid as your as your ceiling. But I love his work ethic. I remember I've seen a video. He's training with DeForest Buckner, I think Eric Armstead, other guys from from the Niners and stuff, just getting after it in the offseason. And I, he looks like a consummate leader, right, on the team. So if anyone can do it, it's him, right? You're not going to worry about, like, man, he just – he didn't have his head on his shoulders, man. Like, no, he's he's, you know – comes from a good family I, I remember re- watching a lot about a military family he lost his father at a pretty young age I think and uh had a really good uh family around him and stuff so he he really I know he can get it done as far as work ethic the problem I have is just the overall talent I I don't see the bend right that you you when you draft a guy like fourth overall he just has to look like that natural pass rusher right guy who just even if he's not quite there yet, you see the moves, right? You see the you see the kind of the dip moves, the rip moves, the kind of uh, you know ability sometimes to just beat a tackle off speed, beat a tackle off power and stuff, uh, power rushing, just something like that. You you see that? I, I just that's what I didn't see. So I'm I'm just a bit concerned. Now, one thing I think that's realistic for him is I believe the Raiders want to play him inside. This might just be a Paul Gunther thing, but I, I think he's I think he likes to play his defensive ends inside and then bring out some speed on the edge on third down, which I don't have a problem with that. But Farrell's got to put on some weight. And I and I hope that's what he's doing right now. I I'm assuming he is. I'm I'm assuming he wants to get a little bit bigger and stronger. Because I don't think the speed rush is going to be his thing. I think he's going to be a power rusher in the league. I think his calling card is bulking up a little bit. And power rushing. Because he's got the frame. He's big. I, I I like I like his frame. But I don't know if we're going to be getting that just that speed rusher. And the, the other reason I got mad about him was that he was drafted to fit Paul Gunther's defense. But I don't know if we'll be playing Paul Gunther's defense after like week five of this season. <laughs> right? I don't know if we're going to be playing the Paul Gunther defense. I think we might be having Rod Marinelli take over if this defense does not get back to at least average. The record's bad. There's going to be heads that roll. I think this is the year Gruden Gruden starts go, getting into Vegas. Heads start to roll, I think. I think the Oakland years were the training years. They don't want to admit that. I think they 
wanted to sell the fact that they wanted to win one last time in Oakland. I don't think Gruden ever wants to lose. I'm not saying that. I just think the they didn't go all in, right? I think right now they're going all in. So we drafted a guy to fit a system that isn't really that good of a system, or if it is a good system, it's not being coached that well in Paul Gunther. So then, you know, is Farrell even the guy once that defense goes? And then you did you kind of punt a fourth overall pick? Look, I'm being a little bit more negative than a lot of people would like, but it's a concern. You can't say it's not. You can't say that you watched the rookie year last year and said, yeah, he was good. No, he was good last year. All you're doing is just talking yourself into the pick. Okay? Let it happen. If it happens, it happens. You can come at me. You can tweet at me, all that stuff. I will be the happiest man in the world if Cleveland Farrell just goes off this year. I want the Raiders to win. I want them to be good. There's a difference between what I think is going to happen and what I want to happen. I want Cleveland Farrell to be great. I don't know if it's going to happen. Right? You can say I'm not a real fan or whatever. That's that's fine. Go ahead. But I didn't know this was you know a fascist you know, authoritarian dictatorship that we're running here. I didn't know you couldn't speak ill on, on players' abilities. I, did, I didn't know that. I didn't know people would tag them on Twitter and ask them to block us. I didn't know that. But uh, I guess shame on me for that one. But no, I, I, don't, I don't think it's wrong to criticize that. I don't, it's the same reason I don't think it's wrong to criticize Derek Carr. Yeah, he's the quarterback of the team. I'm pulling for him. There's no quarterback in the league right now that I want to be better than Derek Carr. And there's other than Max Crosby, there's no other defensive end that I want to be great than Cleveland Furl. And they're probably 1A and 1B. I want them to be great. I just got to see more. I needed to see more last year, and there has to be a huge leap this year. Talking about get back to average as a team, I think he needs to go from bad to good, right? So to, It's not even about justifying the pick anymore, right? The pick's over. It's done. Can't do anything about it. Now it's about just being good, man. Solid ain't going to cut it. Sorry. Solid is not going to cut it. He can't help where he was drafted. I He was a guy I actually wanted at 27 or uh, or 24. When they said that at four, I seen that dude. Remember the, the, the guy, the what? Like that guy that they showed on ESPN? Yeah. I think about that often. And uh, this team's going to have to get after the passer. It's going to have to get after the quarterback. And he's a huge part of it. A huge part of it. So let's talk about the rest of the D line. I uh I I do see this overall as a position that is good with depth. I don't see like greatness out of it, but like I said, we're just trying to get back to average. That's fine. That's fine. There's definitely a scenario. I you know, there's certain guys that are real unknowns on this D line, and there's a couple new faces, so maybe maybe that's it's tough to quantify that, you know, until you see it, right? But um, just a couple names that, that stand out to me is Carl Nassib. Again, I don't think you bring him in if you're super sold on, on Furl, right? I don't think that that happens. That seems like a weird signing. Usually you bring in a guy on like a one-year deal, like a veteran or something to be behind him, come in, you know, spell him, or, or even somebody younger. You don't, you don't usually pay the guy that much money to do it as they're, like they're paying Carl Nassib. So uh, Nassib is, is nice, though. The thing I like about Carl Nassib – is he's going to be the Josh Morrow, right? Or, or somewhat. He's going to I feel like he's kind of going to play that role. But he is not a one-trick pony. He can rush. He can rush, he can stop the run. Josh Morrow when he was on the field, it's it's the same concept that I was talking about with Maurice Hurst. You had Hankins and Morrow on the field, I am passing every time. I won't even try to run the ball. Who cares? I know I'm going to sit there and just, you know, be able to read a book back there. That's not their game. Their game was stopping the run. And Morrow and Hankins made great plays in the backfield. So I'm not saying that they're bad players. It's just you telegraph exactly. You're just showing your hand at the table. Just here, here you go. These are all my cards. What do you guys want to do? They're like, what the fuck, dude? What are you talking about? We're playing poker. You know? You have you have an, uh, the ability to disguise your looks on defense, right? You got linebackers that on, on paper can cover. So that way they're not just picking on your linebackers, just dumping it off to a running back and watching them outrun your linebacker. Tahir Whitehead with – you remember Tahir Whitehead, the most, like, deceiving-looking person ever. That guy looked like a Greek god, like a statue. And then he played like a – actually, he played like a statue now that I think about it. The guy could not move. Couldn't cover anything. No chance. The guy was just jacked. You know that hard knocks thing? I was like, what the hell? How's this guy built like that? Yeah, so deceiving. 
But nonetheless, uh, I love Carl Nassif just for this, just for just for the fact that we can disguise our look on defense, right? Um, Jeremiah Valawaga, I don't, I don't know much about him, and I think he's got a he's a very much a long shot to make the team. Um, I've gone in on Mo Hurst again. Uh, Mo Hurst again. I think he's the breakout player. I think he can. Other than Furl, he Hurst and Furl are the ones. If they both are playing well at a high level, this defensive line is elite, right? So huge, huge years out of both of them for different reasons. Hurst, I just want to see him on the field more. I think you put him on the field more. I think he does better. If you trust analytics, that's what that that's what that says. Um. So Hankins, Hankins is another guy. I like Jonathan Hankins. I have no rush to get rid of him either. Just don't. I just would like to see the snap count flipped between him and, and Mohurst, if that makes any sense, right? Hankins played sixty four percent. Hurst played fifty percent of snaps, right? So I just want to see that flipped around. Hurst getting like sixty four, sixty five percent of the snaps. Again, health permitting. Hopefully Mohurst is healthy and he can be played that long. So again, if the Raiders are keeping that a secret, I totally understand. Um. Malik Collins, the new guy. I really love a lot of the clips I've been seeing of him. Um, people showing him kind of isolated on on uh, offensive guards, really, and over against the center, really, really active hands. Um, I definitely think he's the best pass rushing D tackle that the Raiders have had since Danico Autry. Right? No, look, I'm not going to say Danico Autry was incredible, right? But he could get after the passer. He was he was a pretty solid player. Um, before that, it would probably be Seymour, right, or, or Tommy Kelly, but I think Seymour more so. But I think Willie Collins on a one-year deal, I, I love that one-year deal. I love it. It's exactly the kind of the kind of thing this defensive line needed. Kind of gets lost. I don't hear a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people still are talking about our draft picks, but, man, Willie Collins. Uh, I like, again, her, him and Hurst on third down. That's That's on paper on this depth chart I'm looking at. It's not the team depth chart. That's what's going to happen. But I just don't want it. I don't want it to be just a third down thing. So, um, Malik Collins, Marinelli guy. I think he. I think he's gonna come in day one and rush the passer. I think we'll lose a little bit in the run game, and I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I might be, you know, might be devaluing the run game a bit too much, but that is the way the league's going. People are passing more, so you're just gonna have to be able to rush the passer. And, and look at the teams last year, right? That that the Raiders played. Right, all they had to do was stop Josh Jacobs, but there were teams that were just like, "Ah, eh, screw it, let Jacobs kill us." You know what I mean? Like Packers and Chiefs, they kind of just let Jacobs kill him, and they were like, "You're you're not going to be able to. You got to pass to beat us, right?" And we're going to get a lead on you on your defense, and you can't run the ball all the time. So, I mean, if the Raiders, also, I would hope that the Raiders could just be in, have the lead <laughs> a little bit more, as uh, as elementary as that sounds, but I I want the Raiders to have just leads, right? So they can they can rush the passer more and uh and pin their ears back because uh like i said i expect a huge improvement out of our defensive tackle group now as far as depth at defensive tackle i don't love it hankins is fine but pj pj hall man i it's another one i just don't see it's okay against the run it's not not terrible but he he should be a way better pass rusher like all all you heard about in college is like man this guy is so strong 14 blocked kicks in college which again who cares like that's cool but that's like not the selling point that to draft him in the second round when nobody else was going to but just i i don't know i i this is i don't even know if he makes the team this year and that's that's crazy to think M- maybe he will i don't know you know th- that being gruden's first draft with the team maybe but they're they're cutting a lot of guys from that class zim victor nick nelson probably marcel aitman pretty soon but um yeah, PJ Hall, another year he's gonna have to step up, but I don't see it. Right? I'm down on Cleland Farrell, but I, I do see a scenario where Cleland Farrell turns it around and shuts me the fuck up. And uh he's welcome to tweet at me anything. Like you guys are welcome to roast me if Cleland Farrell puts it together. But I don't see it with PJ Hall, and I, I don't think a lot of people do. So the depth at D tackle is interesting. Daniel Ross, I don't know much about Daniel Ross, but I know Marinelli coached him, so You'd think that's why he's here. Um, I, 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 again, I, I see him Vickers and Valoaga. I don't, I don't really, and Panasuk. I don't see them as, I don't see them as guys that are going to make this team unless something crazy happens. But yeah, 
PJ Hall is going to have to do it, but because I because I, I don't love it. I don't if Hurst or Collins goes down, we're really going to start not not liking the D line. You know, like the especially at D tackle, I I really wouldn't like that. So um, it's thin, but I do love the starting four, right? Including Furl again. I don't, I'll take it easy on him from now on. I just need him to step up, calling him out a little bit. But I love it. I love the starting D line of Furl, Hurst, Collins. And Crosby. I want that to be the starting one, unless you're trying to give a guy a little bit of a break, right? That should be the starting D line. Not Jonathan Hankins. Sorry, bud. So yeah, PJ Hall's gonna have to step it up. Um another guy I wanted to pick as my breakout player, but I just couldn't do it. Oh, not over Hurst. But I do still I do still kind of like this guy, especially last year before he got hurt. Arden Key. Arden Key gets pressure. Arden Key can't tackle, but he gets pressure. Pressure creates sacks, even if it's not the guy who sacked him. Look, we all have the the Deshaun Watson scramble play burned into our head. That sucked. That sucked, man, not being able to wrap up Deshaun Watson. That sucked. And that's been his M.O. this whole career, is not, is just getting to the quarterback and not just free, over-pursuing. He doesn't know how to slow down. It's It's weird. It's like a guy on like ice skates that can't figure out how to stop, right? He's just shredding, shredding, and then he sees the the side of the wall, and he's like, oh, no. He sees the boards. Oh, no. And it just goes right into him. <laughs> but I, Arden Key gets pressure, man. And I do like him. I do like the way they move him around over the field, all over the field. And I'm I'm just not ready to give up on him yet, right? He, he can – he can play. I and this team needed needs a bit more speed. This he's probably the fastest guy on the defensive line. I mean, by far. I, I think I think he's maybe the most athletic. Crosby's pretty damn athletic, but I think Arden Key is going to be the. I think Arden Key is going to be one of those guys that if he, if there's ever a time to take a leap, it's it's right now, right? These three guys from the 18 draft, they spent three picks on D linemen in the 18 draft. Gruden did, Hurst. Hall and Key. All three of them, I think these are huge years for them. Huge years. If they bomb out all three of them, they're out of bye-bye. Right? But if just two out of the three ball out, damn. And the two I would predict would be Hurst and Key, but if just two out of those three guys ball out, that draft looks a little bit better, and this defensive line looks a lot better. Right? Looking real average. <laughs> but, uh... um. Yeah, Arden Key, man. Let's just again. If I don't care if he's not. Look, I'm not saying I don't care. I, if you get to the quarterback, you should bring him down. But just getting pressure and forcing bad throws, this secondary is going to be a lot more athletic and hungry and just overall nasty, honestly. And I expect them to be better playmakers than our than our past secondaries. You need the guy that gets pressure, especially on third down. I loved what they did with Arden Key. Moved him all over the field. A lot of people like Deion Jordan when they brought him in, but I thought he was playing reasonably well before he uh, before he got hurt. And it's not all about sacks, right? It's not all about sacks. It's about beating your blocker, right? It's about getting pressure, winning, right? Winning pass rush win rate is a big thing because that not only gets sacks are usually like, oh, I was there, right? I I've seen guys that get sacks that aren't blocked, right? But then you see the other guy taking on the double team, right? Ripping through the double team, forcing the quarterback outside, getting the other guy an easy sack. I think Mark Arden Key can do that. He could chase the quarterback, you know what I mean, up into the pocket, into those D tackles and stuff. He's got the speed to do it. So it's your last chance, Arden, or last chance with the Raiders at least. I'm, I'm, I think that's a realistic thing to say. Last but not least, the guy who a lot of people say should have been defensive rookie of the year. I'm sorry, it's Bosa, but... I am super excited about Max Crosby. I was at the Bengals game. Four sacks, complete dominance, won the game, in my opinion. Uh, Offense did not play well that game. Uh, Won the game for him. Mullen, too. Mullen and Crosby were incredible that game. I will say the one thing is we cannot bank on this guy to just be like the guy right now. Not saying he can't be. I'm just saying it's 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 his second year in the league. Second year in the league, I think he's going to get a lot more attention. Let's not just pencil him in for 15 sacks and say that, that okay, yeah, here we go. We don't know. 
Now, I will say, I I think he's if he does get get a couple things figured out. I, I remember Paul Gunther was saying, you know, hey, Max is just kind of raw and he's he's guessing from time to time, and and he's just he's just so athletic, he gets it done, he can correct his mistakes. Now, if Max does take that leap, I think Max is, is he's like a twenty sack guy. He's he's like just crushing pressures. Like I I do see him as like just a like a Daniil Hunter almost, just long arms, freakish length, good speed, great secondary moves, um, really good at finishing tackles. That was one thing I loved about Crosby last year was just finishing, finishing plays. The uh, complete opposite of Arden Key. He wins and then he gets the guy down, gets the quarterback down. I, I that was so refreshing to see. Doesn't let anyone get away from him. But let's let's be real. It, again, another guy who's going to be a sophomore year. There always could be a sophomore slump. So. I don't want to. I don't want to. He's not quite there yet to where you just pencil in greatness, right? I think after this year he is. This year he has another great year like he did last year. Pencil him in. He's the pencil it in guy. Great to have one of those pencil in greatness guys, right? Haven't had one of those since Mac. And uh, yeah, so that's just that's the D line. Um, I just, I just again want them to get back to average. And another thing we don't talk about enough is is uh the coach right marinelli there's a lot of pressure on him in my opinion because he's replacing the guy who definitely helped the, the defensive line take strides i thought we had the worst defensive line in the league in 2018 worst i mean we did I mean, it's it's not even debatable brentson buckner definitely definitely seemed to be good with those players they lie I, th- I feel like they liked him and he he got a lot out of guys. I mean, like Benson Mayo, right? Benson Mayo was kind of was the guy to me that kind of is why sacks aren't the end all be all because a lot of his sacks weren't like just him smashing the tackle. A lot of his sacks were just cleanup sacks, which that's fine. You got to be able to do that, but that's why sacks aren't everything to me. But I do see, you know, guys like Brenton Buckner. I thought he had the defensive line not playing great, but getting the most he could out of them. So when you bring in a guy like Marinelli, it's it's not. You know he's definitely, definitely a decorated defensive coordinator, established. But you know it's not a guarantee that he's better than than Buckner. So that's a that's kind of another thing about that. Um, again, I do anticipate him being better than Buckner. I actually anticipate him being the defensive coordinator for the Raiders uh, sooner rather than later, especially if the defense starts slow. Um, but again, I, I Coach Buck, man, that was such a surprise to me when they when they got rid of Coach Buckner. I, I liked him a lot. He was good. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I, I guess they, they saw a way that, Hey man, I can get a great defensive line coach. Had a good one, found a way to get a great one. Okay. Makes sense. So, uh, that's the D line. Um, I'm, I'm expecting, and I, I will say, I thought they were slightly, they weren't terrible last year, the defensive line. So when I say get back to average, no, I think they should, this year they should try to get to above average to help the defense get back to average. Right. Um, so yeah, that's the theme of the offseason. Let's play average defense. <laughs> Sounds dumb, but average defense do a lot for this organization. Um, that's probably gonna be it for me. I don't see if I had anything more I wanted to say, but I think that's probably gonna be it. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Glenn Rockney. You might see me as G Rock floating through your mentions, debating. That's what I do. So uh yeah, at Glenn Rockney, G L E N R O C K N E Y. Uh, feel free to listen to this and talk shit to me after. I have no problem with it. Um, I don't get mad. I don't. I don't really like block people and stuff. Like I see all the people. Like who cares, man? It's a bad. If somebody has a bad take and who gives a shit, I might just roll my eyes and be like, eh, whatever. So, get, uh, get at me on Twitter. Um, I do have a podcast called Rare Candy. Um, it is a leftist politics slash you know just guys being dudes podcast so uh you can also subscribe to that uh, both of the links are on those are on my uh on my twitter so you can uh, you can access those please subscribe to rock vegas that's this podcast on itunes and uh leave a review um even if you hate me just leave a review who cares so uh that's it for me guys uh raider nation just win baby <laughs>